what is up, everybody? The podcast is back. It's your man, Lukey. And we got the all-star amateur boxing squad um, in the building. We got Mark Castro, like one of the best amateur boxers of the last 20 years. What's up, Mark? What's up, Lukey? Thank you for having me. And that, okay, and then we got uh, 2020 Olympic trials competitor out of Concord, California, but really from Sacramento now, <laughs> Kevin Montano. What's up, Kevin? What's up, Lukey? <laughs> So, uh, who wants to start, bro? Who wants to start with uh, the USA Boxing Olympic Trials? I guess we should probably start with Kevin, cause he, considering you competed in it. Right. Yeah. Um, what's uh, one in particular did you want to start on? We want to start in your division, because your division was also Mark's division. Right. And we want to just talk about your journey, and then I want to hear Mark's thoughts on the division that he knows so well. So, let's just start right there. Okay. Um, well, I thought the division was uh, – I thought there was definitely some competition there. Um, some past time, 2016, Olympic alternates were there uh, with uh, Bruce and, and Duke. So I, th- I thought, you know, I knew coming in uh, it, w- it wasn't going to be an easy trip. I think probably the, the, the best in my weight class were probably definitely uh, Bruce, Carrington, and uh, Duke. I don't. I don't think uh, David Navarro was really one of the top guys there. You know, even though he did get the the number two spot, um, I think it was definitely should have been at least Bruce and Duke. Um, but honestly, I I mean after beating after beating uh, David Navarro, I, I knew he definitely you know shouldn't be in that in that spot that he's in. Uh, Man, you're just throwing shade right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> No, I, honestly, it, it's it's really it's really the judge's <laughs> fault. But yeah, you can you call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just just keep going. Him. No, I don't even know him. I, I'm just more mad that you know that I, I beat him, and then I, yeah, I'm not you know in the spot. That kind of makes sense. No, I get exactly yeah. what you're saying, bro. I've had that happen to me multiple times in my life. Yeah. I can sometimes be labeled a hater, so it's quite yeah. all right. I understand. <laughs> now, but I mean, all respect to him. Like he, he worked hard, just like all all of us that you know that made it that far. So you know, he was in the right place at the right time, and I think that's what got him the the position. Okay, and yeah. uh, Mark, you obviously weren't out in Lake Charles, but I know you had a bird's eye view on the 125 pound mm-hmm. division. What were your thoughts on this division? Um, <laughs> as the whole trials, as a whole, the trials was just in a. Amazing event. It was a event full of awes and shocking events every day. And and the 125 bracket was a uh, was one of the toughest brackets out there. And um, being a uh, being that was going to be the weight class I wanted to compete in. Um, I knew the I knew I had a I knew the competition was stacked. From we have a 2017 silver world silver medalist, a 2016 Olympic alternate. Uh, and just just knowing that just knowing that it's one of the most decorated um divisions it 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 got me more motivated to train but just uh just knowing uh not, not knowing I was not going to compete it was more interesting because you could see the event playing out and you could actually see the the way <coughs> like it, the way it unfolds, and I like the trials because it's double elimination. And sometimes uh, people see the decisions go the wrong ways, or they think some decisions go another way. But it's just it's just interesting how the whole event unfolds. But uh, Bruce Carrington winning, congratulations to him. Um, I thought that he was one of the top competitors. I don't know why he was labeled eighth seed. And um, and I'm happy he won, and and I actually predicted that he would have been he he beat Duke the first day, and I told Kevin. Yeah, he did. That <laughs> I told Kevin that the first day that Bruce is Bruce is gonna beat him. I mean, and it's just yeah. the way the way it plays out. It's it's honestly crazy because there's little factors that go into it from making weight every day. And some fighters are just used to fight international, and some fighters are not used to resting a day in between. So just a lot of factors go 
and like many, maybe main, minor things like um like time zone and it was a stacked division we had brawlers like like david navarro people that come forward like kevin we got southpaws like rashid jefferson we had um great boxers with jazz like duke and great counter punches like bruce and it was a stacked division now, not to put either of you guys in a bad position, but do you feel like anyone kind of uh, let the moment get to them? Do you feel like in this division, anyone kind of didn't fight to the best of their abilities in this mm-hmm. division? Or do you think everyone go. showed up in the trials? Um, i like to say, I'll, I'll go on to this one. Um, I feel like everybody, everybody gave their, fought their heart out. Yeah. And I think another interesting thing they should add to the trials is maybe show the scores in between rounds. Like they're gonna they wanna do at the Olympics. Maybe that that make fighters fight. And because sometimes they'll know what the judges are looking for at that moment. Right. And but I won't I wouldn't say any fighters let it get to them because this is what they've been working for their whole life. And it just it just probably fell for a dream for a lot of fighters because the moment was here, and it was time to seize the opportunity. What do you think, Kevin? Um, can you restate the question again, just so I can answer it? Just, Roger. just like, just how do you like? Did you feel like at like the moment? Because I'll, I'll let, I'll answer the question. I'll answer it, so you guys don't have to mm-hmm. say it. Is in a different division. I felt like a guy that I know, Adrian Tillman, oh. is extremely talented, but. He came in as the number one seed. He lost, and on the second day, he lost again. And I feel like he never quite showed how talented he is. Right. And potentially, maybe the moment got to him. And I'm not saying it did or it didn't. I'm just saying it potentially could, looking from the outside in, because I know he's talented enough to win a fight on two days. Right. So I'm basically just saying, like, you could say it in this division, but do you feel like anyone – that you noticed with kind of got overwhelmed or that um, the moment got to him? Um, not in my division specifically, I don't think so. I know everyone in my weight class was hungry and, and wanted it, you know, obviously some more than others, but I don't think, I mean, this is just too big of a tournament to, you know, to choke, you know, if you, if you got here, then you're probably not going to choke. But uh, I mean, I can see, I can see that happening in other <coughs> weight classes. I, I wasn't really focused on other weight classes as much. Uh, besides mine, but I mean, I I, I was watching and I, I I didn't really see uh too much chug chugging, but I did see a lot of upsets, some crazy upsets all week. That's another topic that what am I talking about? Like, uh, let's go there. Like Troy Isley didn't yeah. make the top two, and that was crazy to me. Yeah, and the Duke also. Um, I was shocked about yeah. I think and Tillman. Yeah. Tillman. Too. The thing about Tillman is that he he had went down to 178, like dieting real good, yeah. and um, since uh, Jared turned pro, Jared Anderson, I think he went back to 201. He seen the opening, but I think it was too. Uh, he had lost too much like muscle mass, so he wasn't. He didn't have the power to compete at 201. Like no taking just any disc to his skills or anything. Yeah, and 178 is a hard division because Raheem is a really, really talented fighter who's very yeah. experienced. So if you go up there, you've got to be a very good competitor to compete with Raheem. Right. And he competes in running shoes. If I don't know if you guys. Yeah, know. I seen that. I was like, "What? The, what is he? What are you wearing, bro?" Like, <laughs> he's got some some Air Forces on. He got some no, some on. Under Armour. Under Armour. <laughs> that makes no sense to me because like. Those shoes feel like I'm fighting in slides. Like, they have no sport. I don't know how he does it. He just does him. Like, yeah. he just feels comfortable, I guess. It's probably just, like, an old habit. Like, yeah. it's probably just, like, probably boxing shoes feel the way that those shoes feel for you, to him. Yeah, I can see that. I'll, if it, I'll, if I'll it's just... working, don't. Yeah. If it's working, don't stop. Exactly. Kevin, you were there. Who were the upsets? You were you were getting into it, but like Duke and all that. Who like you want to talk about this topic? Let's get into it. Who right. who were you surprised by? Definitely. Uh, well, there was two upsets on Duke. Well, the first one, he did get beat by Bruce, so like that was an upset. Uh, the second one was when Duke got beat by the guy that I beat, uh, David Navarro. Um, I didn't watch that fight, 
but <coughs> a lot of people said that Duke actually won it. I don't know which way is true or not, but that's that was another big upset because Duke already beat David. Um, then there was also Troy, and then also Javier got beat one day, which was another. I thought it was an upset. He got beat by Joseph Hicks. You know Joe Hicks is pretty good. Yeah. Joe Hicks is pretty good. Like, I mean, that's an upset because Joe's been behind Troy yeah. and Javier. But Joe's a pretty good fighter. Like, yeah. Yeah, I give him prize. But I think I, Javier took, back, took it back in the end, I think. Yeah, he beat him on the Monday box yeah. off. How mad do you think the officials were that there were box off fights? Like, that they had <laughs> to do a Monday fight card? You know, deep um, down inside. They're probably, they probably I don't think they're upset because um it's what they do. And um just another day to chill. Yeah, I mean, okay, I mean they came for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking negatively like an old bitter person. I'm just thinking like they had their bags packed and they're thinking about going to a steakhouse the next day. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, we got three stressful fights. <laughs> I can um, yeah. Who are the big people that stand out to you, two amazing boxers at the highest level of amateurism? Uh, Who are the people that people should look at from these trials and say, these are some fighters we should focus on going into the Olympics in 2020? Mm. Who goes for answer that? Yes. I want Mark to go first because Kevin started the last one. Okay. Um, There's many great competitors for the USA. And um, it just depends because they're kind of still deciding for the second, pl- second, first and second place. And it just depends on the system. Like they're going to send each the top two boxers to each tournament. And whoever basically, it's like a report card, like whoever does better at the tournament and little things like weight management, like they're going to go on and compete at the Continentals and they need to place top five. But there's many great fighters and the main ones are to watch. Are well, I say Keyshawn Davis on 138. He won a silver medal. And um, 178 got a silver medal. It's all about international experience now. Raheem Gonzalez. And oh, yeah, Raheem, of course. And but um, I'm just not sure because Raheem didn't, Raheem won last year and he didn't go to no training camps. Oh, what? So that's like a big factor. And did, did he, he do any no international competition? Did he do international competition either? Uh, he didn't do no international competition either. What? Yeah, see that that's kind of a big deal because going into this, that's pretty big. Yeah. <coughs> he just chose not to, or what? I just I think so. That's... He just didn't show up. But um, Keyshawn Davis is the one that stands out the most, and I'm just waiting for Richard Torres to get back into the mix too. Yeah. Well, I think they've got. The, what do you What do you guys think? I'm gonna text with both of you on January 4th when they do this box off. But do you think they're gonna even give us a stream or like a Facebook yeah, live or anything? I hope so. Uh, Maybe Instagram live, if anything. Like yeah. an Instagram story. Instagram live, maybe like they did the Pan Americans. Okay. Maybe I they hope. they did the whole thing live or just like clips. No, I, I mean, oh yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to see it since it's technically a final for like this top two spots for the Olympic trials. Right. I think Richard would knock out that guy probably. Oh, yeah. 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 Richard definitely knocked that guy out. Well, considering that guy Jeremiah Milton is someone that I know who trained in Oakland, I'm gonna say that um, it's gonna be a good competitive fight and. It's definitely going to be tough for him because Richard's got a ton of international experience, but I, I'm just going to be on this positive vantage point where I'm just going to say they're both really good competitors, and I just want them just to have the opportunity to compete. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be because it's boxing. You never know what could happen. And um, it's just boxing. You just And then heavyweight boxing, you don't know what could – can happen because any punch could change the course of a fight. Yeah. Because it's like Richard and Keyshawn and Jenny are kind of like the faces of USA boxing, I feel like, right now. Yeah. I feel like because I, I saw Milton's the, the shorter one, right? Because he took the second yeah. place. Yeah. Do you see that? You saw the 
the what was it Sunday fight when when they fought against uh yes so I, I saw him get he he was actually winning the first round and then he got so tired in the second, in the round, second round that he just it didn't matter but he he could have honestly beat that guy but he didn't and I'm just worried about like Richard he comes and he keeps coming and coming so I feel like he's gonna really wear out Milton after that first round because. Because the other guy, uh, what's the other guy? The big, the huge guy, um, Antonio Morales, Myris. Mar- yeah, that guy. He he wasn't really doing shit the first round, and that's what allowed uh, Milton to be so successful. <coughs> but Richard comes, so I'm not sure, you know, how he's gonna handle that. Uh, yeah. One observation about the guy that beat Milton: Did he look like the boss in a video game at the end of the level? <laughs> yeah, like, just abnormally big. Yeah, he was just huge and like plain. Yeah, he yeah. looked like like the character in Punch Out, like your regular size, and he's big. Yeah, there was like a foot difference almost. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Yeah. So, um, I guess just running through them, Kevin. Did any like did you have any encounters with people at the hotel? Did you see anybody in other weight classes? Just like anything of note from this tournament that stands out to you. That people would go, wow, that's interesting. Uh, what well, I, I hang, I hung out with like you know people from all weight classes. I'm cool with everybody. You know, uh, Javier Martinez, Troy. Uh, I, I even talked to Keyshawn for a while. Um, I seen people that weren't there, that didn't qualify. Um, I seen. I mean, nothing basically, crazy. You know, nothing crazy. Basically, <laughs> the main thing for me is for. Out of eight hundred and four, 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 half the hundred fourteen pound weight class have dropped out because of weight. Oh yeah, that's, they got that's TKO'd by weight. They yeah. got yeah, knocked they, out. they had to get DQs. Yeah, and it's it's crazy because it's just really interesting because it just shows a uh, it shows that it was tough out there to make weight out there for them. Yeah, Do you but, have any suggestions that you would make or suggest for like future trials? Um, make weight the week before. <laughs> uh, for future trials, I guess the best, um, the best suggestion I say I can give is I'm not sure at all, honestly, because they had a couple of days in between to make the weight. And um, I guess don't make them in during December because December it's cold. It's after That's one of the best. Yeah, <laughs> make them Kevin, in the summer. What was like the workout room situation for you when you were making weight? Like, what was the situation? Well, I mean, I played it smart and I made weight before. Like, I touched 125 before getting to Louisiana. So when I got back to Louisiana, I was probably like 129, 130. So all I did was, you know sit in the hot tub and or maybe just run for like 20 30 minutes so uh, i already touched the weight so it was easy to just you know come back down so really I, all i did was sit in the hot tub for the most part and just take off all the water weight okay uh, yeah. i mean i do that like two or three times a week and i'm not even cutting weight so yeah <laughs> good to know that that that's helpful but did you see like people like where was it the gym overcrowded? Like I'm guessing it's like a hotel gym or they have like the the heavy bags out like they do at the tournaments. Like what uh, was the situation on like people making weight? Did you spy anything like that? Well, there there was like a workout room that they had, <laughs> but I never I, – I Ubered to another gym because it was just so packed in there. But um, pretty much all the nearby gyms were, were full of boxers. Like anywhere – any gym that you went to nearby is full of boxers and – you know they had their their sauna suits, and you know the, most of them were were in the sauna. They were trying to you know do it that way in the sauna. They just kept going in back and forth, back and forth, checking the weight, and and just trying to lose the last few pounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna just run through kind of some of these weight classes, and you give me, you guys give me your thoughts. So at 114, Abraham Perez won. Uh, Mark, do you have any thoughts on him? Kevin, do you have any thoughts on Abraham Perez? Um, Abraham <coughs> Perez is a name. I, it's not the first time I heard his name. And I always said this, like, whoever works the hardest 
and knowing someone that was in 114 weight class, well, two of them, my friends, Fernando Martinez mm-hmm. and Jose Nieves, I always said the the best guy that the best man win, and and Abraham was the best man, and uh, it was his blessing to win. And um, I'm not sure if he has international experience, but I hope he does well. He's a good mm-hmm. counter puncher. That's that's the main thing I took away from this was he's a good counter puncher. Anthony Herrera, who's trained by Edgar Josso, uh, came in second. Uh, Kevin, I did you see these fights? It was the final day. Um, I unfortunately didn't see uh, those fights, um, so I can't. I couldn't really tell you too much about them. But I uh, know if they worked hard, I'm, I'm happy for them. Okay, now yeah. we've kind of touched on, but Bruce Carrington, David Navarro. We know Kevin, uh, not the biggest David Navarro fan. Uh, Bruce Carrington. We're all pretty, pretty high on the fact that he's a very talented boxer. Probably, I'd say the most experienced boxer at 120. Five pounds in the trials. Who? Who? Bruce Carrington. Uh, no, I think Duke. Yeah. <coughs> Does Duke have more experience than Bruce? Yeah, Duke. Yeah. Duke has way more international experience. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just, I was thinking more like, just like he's been around, kind of like I've been hearing about him for a how, long. How old time. is he? How old is he? Duke was at. Duke is. They're both twenty-two. Oh, crazy! Bruce is twenty-two. Yeah, because wasn't he at the last one too? At the. Yeah. yeah. So it was Duke. So it was oh, Duke. Oh yeah, that's right. There, Duke was at 123, and um, Michael Angeletti was at 123, and uh, Bruce Carrington was at 132. Michael oh, Angeletti right. lost the first day to that kid from Maywood Boxing Gym, Anthony. I can't say his last name, and then he missed weight. That is a really disappointing uh, Olympic trials for a number one seed. Not to throw shade, but that's just a disappointing performance. I, yeah. yeah, I don't see any. You, you hate to see it, but, but um, you rather do you rather have the boxer just kill himself to make the weight and then go into the ring and something tragic happen because that would look really bad on USA Boxing and uh, and no one want no one wants to see that happen and that's um, I guess they need to, I don't know how to say it but like. It's just you don't want it to happen. Like it's mm-hmm. devastating to see him lose on the scale, but it would be more devastating if he made the weight and something tragic would happen in the ring. Like if he went in so damaged that a single punch could change his life, and then that yeah. was every headline. Yes, exactly. Because that would have made um, boxing in America so look so bad in a way, and yeah. it would just make USA Boxing publicity really horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me personally, I mean, I totally understand where you're coming from, but, like, if I'm going to prepare months for the Olympic trials and try to make it on the Olympic team, I'm not going to make any excuses. I mean, me. this is just me personally. Like, I would go in there with pneumonia and try to fight, you know. Like, I don't care. Like, if it, if it, it's like, you know, it, it, it comes once every four years. But, you know, if it comes to the point where, like, you know that you're just going to get hurt, I get it. Like, if if I have a fighting chance, if I can fight, I'm going to get in that ring. But if if I know I'm just going to get hurt, then, okay, I, I, can, I can see where you guys are coming from. But I think that gets back yeah. to what I was telling you earlier before the podcast, Kevin, yeah. is that you're just tougher than some of these boxers. Yeah. Like, right. you're just mentally tougher than a lot of these guys. Like, I think some of these guys view this as basketball. They view it as a sport, and I think you view it more as a fist fight. Right. I, so, yeah, I could agree with that. Okay, let's jump to 138 pounds. This was kind of a, like the marquee division. We got Keyshawn, we got Ernesto Mercado, Charlie Sheehy, Harley Medeiros. Um, anybody out here stand out to you guys? Mm, I think t- I think mm. the top two were definitely Keyshawn and Charlie. Um. I could see I I I could see the fight between Ernesto and Charlie go either way. I thought it was a real close fight, so I'm not really too mad. You know, Charlie's my homie, but I'm not really too mad about this decision. I I personally thought Charlie would win the fight, but I could see it going either way. It was pretty close. And for what me, um, um, I would I would have loved to see the Keyshawn and uh, Ernesto matchup. I'm not saying that he would have beat Keyshawn, but I just wanted to see Keyshawn display his talents, and uh, I feel really bad for him because 
it's a it was a big opportunity since it was that it was streamed on the NBC Sports app for him to display his talents. But definitely Keyshawn and Charlie were the two most experienced boxers. But then you have hungry, hungry fighters like Ernesto Mercado, and Harley's really Harley had won a a bronze medal at the junior world championships and the youth world champ the youth continentals won a gold. So um, it was just. Um, it was, I guess, it was a two-way tie for the top three boxers, yeah. and um, Keyshawn, Harley, and uh, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was really good bracket. Yeah. I just didn't like that. I didn't like that Keyshawn didn't fight on the last day, and you talked about this, Mark, that because it's yeah. televised, so it's like basically Keyshawn, a guy who has a lot of fans, uh, they never really got to see his fight unless someone filmed it which you weren't supposed to do right and that i just i don't like that and that's no shade to ernesto ernesto said that he's he was sick that day and we'll take him at his word but i'm just saying like it just kind of bums me out that uh people didn't get to see Keyshawn perform yeah be pretty, yeah it's really uh, devastating because i would have felt something <laughs> that would have happened to me because you don't like to see a fighter pull out and yeah, he got the free win and it's secure and then like all that. But you're a fighter, you train for this, it's what you've been competing for. And he's probably been telling the whole week that his family and friends like tune in the app, tune in the app just for him not to be fighting it and it's not even his fault. So it's devastating. What were you gonna say, big dog Kevin? Um uh, No, I think Mark covered it on that one, honestly. Okay, so 52, we got Tiger Johnson, Kelvin Davis, and Fredos Rojas. This is one of those divisions where after these three names, it's not very deep. Yeah. So what were the names? Well, Tiger Johnson, who when Mark was fighting in Oxnard, I was actually in between filming Tiger and Mark. They were like in the same locker room. That was actually a weird experience at the Oxnard. We just kind of like took (laughs) over a back room. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but, like, we just made a locker room that no one else went to. And, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, and so Tiger, Kelvin Davis, who's Keyshawn's brother, and Freitas Rojas, who was number one in America but didn't compete at any international, I don't believe, this year. Mm. I think I think Tiger definitely made a statement. <laughs> Uh, Delonte Johnson. Uh, I think he definitely made a, a statement um, over Freddie. I thought I thought Freddie was like Freddie's my homie too. I, I really like him. I thought he could have pulled it off, but he and that, I saw that last fight. He didn't. He just didn't do enough. Uh, Tiger was just a little bit more aggressive. He was a little bit more accurate and accurate. And and Freddie, I feel like if he just you because he has such a long range, like he could literally hit you from halfway across the ring if you want to. Um, uh, but he didn't. He didn't really use. You know, he he didn't have enough output. Um, I didn't really see too much of Kelvin Davis, so I, I can't really talk on him. But uh, I think Tiger, you know, clearly won the that last fight. Your boy Freddie fights yeah. like uh, Klitschko, bro. Yeah. Or he should fight like Klitschko, I should say. He's got like that crazy long reach with a one-two. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on this division, Mark? Or I think Mark, um, yeah. Okay, so one fifty two. It's a it's it's already like you already knew who the top guys were, in which in uh, which was um, uh, Tiger Johnson from being second place last year and Freddie Rojas, and then being great friends and stuff, and um, and but then you got newcomers like uh, Keyshawn's brother Keon Davis, and I love his story. It's great, like it's great for the Olympic trials because there's all everybody has their own story to tell, and um, and the Lavaris Carter, and it's just a stack division because, yeah, they these guys might not be known on to the national stage, but these guys are really talented, and um, for Tiger winning, I'm not I'm gonna say I'm not surprised, because it could it it was a toss up for first and second place. Because they're both really talented and they know each other really well. For Tiger and uh, Freddie. So, <clears throat> middleweight, 165 pounds. 
we had Javier Martinez winning. Uh, Joe Hicks was second, and Troy Isley was third. Outside of those three, would you say there's anyone at middleweight that you thought had a chance of doing anything, really? Mm, not that I know of. I knew it was going to be one of those. Well, I knew for sure one of those, either Troy or, or Javier. I, I didn't know about Joseph Hicks coming back like that. That was honestly a surprise for me. I didn't. I didn't know who Joseph Hick was. Like no disrespect to him, yeah. and I thought it was gonna be like I thought. I thought Javier was. I thought um, Javier was gonna. Javier was gonna give. Troy a good run for his money, but then I remember Javier had competed at the one seventy eight division, so I didn't think he was gonna come down to one sixty five. So it kind of shocked me, and it kind of a lot of questions going through your head, like, oh, would the weight cut be too much? But. And then another thing, um, Troy just came back from beating the gold medalist from 2016 Olympian the, from Cuba, the Cuban, and uh, it just it's just a lot of factors. But like it just it comes down who who wanted it more and who executed more. And Javier did that, and Joseph Hicks made his statement out there beating Troy and <coughs> Javier. So props to him; he did his work. He, but it's a double elimination and. You have to lose twice, and Javier just came out victorious, and congratulations to him. So we haven't done this yet, but we'll start with Javier. Do you guys think Javier will qualify internationally? Hmm. Um, you have to place top five in the Continentals, and uh, um, yes, Javier will qualify. Yeah, I think he will. Okay. But all, it all depends on the first tournament because – you never know. You never know what could happen in the first tournament. But I th- I believe Javier will qualify. Yeah, I think he will do. I mean, I traveled with him internationally before. And he, he uh, you know, he's he, he's he's a fun guy to, to be around. But when it's time to work, he, he focuses. So I, I think uh, I, I think he has everything he needs to qualify. He seems really yeah. mean in the ring. Like, it seems yeah. like what got him over the edge was he was just meaner than everyone. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> if if he if you don't know him like that, you can be mean. I'll, I'll, so that kind of just translates into the ring. That's just kind of who he is. Um, so I don't really know how weird that. Oh, go ahead, Mark. Oh, yeah, I don't really know how weird that. Well, um, a couple of times I think we traveled once together, and we kind of like I don't want to say we got into it, but it was <laughs> like we we had like a little encounter, slap boxing, a little friendly encounter, <laughs> and um, it was good. Um, but yeah, like he doesn't. He's a fighter. He doesn't back yeah. down from any challenge, and um, he's a he's a good boxer. So, and like he, like being an Olympic trial winner, it's tough. And um, he did his he did his thing, and I'm I'm happy and proud of him. Yeah, um, at 178, we got Raheem Gonzalez and Atif Olberton, and like I literally had no doubts that Raheem was going to come out of this division before or after this tournament. Mm. Um, I didn't, I didn't know because I talking to Raheem, I thought he was going to go up to the heavyweight division because he was just jumping away classes like crazy. Yeah. And um, I'm happy he stayed at 178 because I felt like there was a hole in that division from um, Khalil Cole not competing in trials. But I'm happy for Raheem. Raheem was at the last trials at 141. And um, he just stopped killing himself to make that weight. Have you guys ever been to a tournament? And now we'll go back to the recording after um, okay. this. But um, have you guys ever been to a weird-ass country? Like, I lived in Armenia for six months just for my own thing. But have what you ever... the hell? <laughs> <laughs> There's a point to it, but I lived in Armenia. And then... I met a boxer, and he's like, oh, I competed in Armenia. I was, like, looking at him, like, why would you compete in Armenia? Like, it's not. But uh, have you guys ever gone to a country and just been like, man, this is going to be a weird-ass week? Mm. Pretty, pretty much all of them. Uh, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Because <laughs> you're not, yeah. it's, it's like, it's even the slightest thing because we're so used to going to the same gym or the same routine for getting up and training and just, like, Boxers got to get comfortable with, like, being uncomfortable and just, like, like say we have to go work out the hotel workout rooms and uh, say we can't change the temperature to the rooms and it's, like, 70 degrees and we have to lose weight. So 
So it's like we just got, we're just used to it. You just got to like suck it up and just do it. And um, it's usually all the countries, but it's worse for like the it's worse for the European countries like Russia and Germany, and Kazakhstan because you don't speak the language. You're not accustomed to the food, not accustomed to the time zone, the weather, the water. It's every all the little things go a long way. So now jumping back to the trials, uh, the 201 pound division, the eight seed fought the seven seed. I had really liked this guy, Darius Fulgham, or uh, the runner-up, Jamar Talley, to qualify internationally, but I'm not sure they're going to. What do you guys think? Uh, what weight are they? 200 pounds, dead even. Uh, I'm not I'm not even sure. I didn't pay attention to that weight class. <laughs> um, okay. Me, personally, I, I didn't really pay attention to that weight class either, but I did see them fight. I saw, like, the last round, maybe, like, second, third round. And I didn't really, like, I didn't really see too much. Like, you know, I'm sure they work hard. And I'm sure they're good fighters. But I didn't see, like, anything special, you know. Like, I I, I, I watched them. Like, um, it was competitive between themselves. But I don't know if they'll be able to qualify. They're just, like, just, like I, I didn't see, like, you know, like, I didn't see, like, a Keyshawn or, like, a like a Shakur Stevenson. Or, like, I, I didn't see nothing special. So, I was, like, I don't know if they're going to make it, you know. Yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Um at 201 pounds, are we kind of just saying it's Richard Torres, even though he didn't compete? Honestly, me personally, I think, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's just my, that's my opinion. And I think Mark might have had to uh, go away for a <laughs> No, no, I'm good. I'm good now. Well, oh, okay, I thought, no, I, I thought you disappeared. No, nah, so, somebody called me. Go call me right now. FaceTime. Okay, we're, so, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay, I was just going to say, um, we were talking about 201 pounds, and it's Richard Torres. Like, are we going to just basically, even though he didn't compete, say this is the Richard Torres division? Um, I'll, <laughs> I'll say this is the Richard Torres division because Richard Torres has proved himself time and time again when a lot of people have doubted him. Yeah, he didn't have the best performance at the – the world championships, but it's all a part. Of, it's all a part of his journey, and I think that he will be an Olympic medalist. Yeah, um, at yeah, the twenty twenty Olympics, I definitely think he'll he'll at least grab a medal because that man fights like he he's a super heavyweight, but he moves so fast and throws so many punches. It's crazy. Like I don't know, I don't know how he moves that fast, but he he fights like a like a thirty eight pounder, but at two hundred one plus, so. And that's just something that's you don't see too often. He's really active. Yeah. He's always on his feet. Um, he trains hard. He um, he's competing. Like when we, when, I remember when we were in the youth team, it was uh, there's three guys that were always in the front. Were like that were always like racing to the front. It was like me, Dylan Price. I was one twenty three. Dylan was one hundred eight, and then Richard Torres. We we're all running for first place, and this like a five mile run. And usually it'll be like I'll be first, and then Rich, Dylan will be second, and then third will be Rich. But he'll be right on us if we slip up. If we like, he'll be right there to pass us up. And Richard will kill himself. And Richard wants to be the hardest worker in the room, and that's how that's where he got him where he's at today. Okay, women's 112 pounds. We got Jenny Fuchs. And we got Christina Cruz. Those are the candidates. I think Jenny's going to get a medal. What do you guys think? <coughs> Jenny definitely will get a medal. And I believe it's going to be gold. Yeah, I don't Jenny. see no one stopping her. Yeah, Jenny's got the experience. I feel like she's more than able to. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. her style, she almost fights like a girl version of Richard Torres. Southpaw, <laughs> active, come forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's that. really active. Always a fainting condition is crazy. Um, her counter punching is crazy, and um, she's a she's a great boxer. And um, she's she was. I remember one year she just got gold medals at every international tournament, and I hope I hope she repeats her success this year. I watched her give a girl. I forget which. It might have been the chemistry cup. It was some international competition, but she was the first bout, and she stopped the girl in the first round. 
And I was like, okay, that's pretty impressive to stop someone in international competition, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she's really good at what she does. She, she, she's always training and she's always trying to find ways to improve. And um, I'm happy for her and I believe she could be one of the gold medalists. Let me go medals for USA. <coughs> okay, uh, Lupe Gutierrez at 125, Rashida Ellis. At 132, do you think these two make the Olympic team? What do you think of them? Oh, I think I think Lupe, uh, she definitely had an international experience. So I feel like she has a lot of potential, especially with uh, coming all the way down from the, I think she was the seventh seed, and then she, she wins the whole thing. Um, I think she definitely caught a lot of people by surprise, and I feel – I actually train. I have seen her train. You know, I, I'll be training at the same gym as her sometimes, no. so and they go. They spar for rounds and rounds. Like she's, she's got gas to go for rounds. So I, mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, when it when the times come, she'll 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 definitely work hard enough to get that medal. <laughs> okay. Well, that's um, that because you're you and Lupe are both in SAC, so you yeah. you know that Rashida Ellis. Um, the sister of Rashidi Ellis, the pro boxer. I think she's pretty good. Um, um, yeah. Uh, um, I was going to answer the question. The 130, 125, I think a lot of people forget Lupa Gutierrez is actually a world champion back in 2015 alongside Heaven Garcia. And uh, that she was not, a, you don't win a world championship by being just anybody. And I, I feel like she will qualify here. Rashid, Rashid Ellis. I actually know her brother Ronald. That was that was my roommate when I was with uh, with Canelo in San Diego, and he's a this is a great dude. And I know that she comes from a boxing family. I knew she she's gonna qualify too, and she's gonna do well at the one thirty two. Okay, so someone I think is gonna be a my Lukey Lock of the Olympics is O'Shea Jones winning gold. Um, what do you guys yeah. think of O'Shea Jones at one fifty two? I don't see nobody stopping her. She's unstoppable. She, I just love the swagger she brings to the ring and yeah. um, the excitement when you know she's gonna, she's gonna like you know she's gonna win. You're just gonna know like oh like what kind of celebration, um, what cel- what kind of celebration is gonna do. It's kind of like a Tofimo thing when Tofimo yeah. was doing his backflips and his Fortnite dances. Yeah. It's just like you want to see the celebration. Like, like it's just the little things that mean the boxing fans and it, it stays in people's minds and. Uh, I see O'Shea winning gold as well. Yeah, I, I can see her. I can see her winning. She comes to fight. Her personality is amazing, you know, in and outside the ring. You know, she's she fights. You know, she comes to fight. She comes to kick your ass. But I don't know once she comes out that ring, she's super nice. And I feel like she has the the, the personality to you know to to meddle and to to really embrace it all. Okay. Um... And then the last Olympic category, uh, 165 pounds, Naomi Graham. I literally know nothing about this division internationally, so I, I can't really qualify to speak on this division. Um, Naomi Graham is a great boxer. I believe she won a couple international tournaments, and uh, I believe she's a good Olympic. We have a solid, we have a really great uh, women's side of the USA boxing team, and I believe they should all medal. And that's a bold statement, but. I believe it, and um, we should. We're gonna have a lot of medals, and um, I could, I could say at least two gold medals on the girl side, two out of five gold medals on the girl side, and but I believe all awesome medal, and it's gonna be a great year for USA boxing in twenty twenty. Yeah, I think. And now, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. No, no I was go gonna, ahead. Take I was gonna re- reiterate what uh, Mark said. I feel like. Definitely, our women's team is is dominating, like even more than our men's team. Uh, I think on the world stage, uh, our women will definitely dominate the, in the Olympics. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. And I was gonna say, since I got you guys on there, I got a, a couple quick hit topics, and we'll get your opinions on them. Uh, first topic: Why is Tyson Fury and Teofimo Lopez somewhat eclipsing Lomachenko and Terence Crawford on the top right? top rank side of things or is that or am i tripping what do you mean by that like why are they i just I, like what i'm saying by saying the word eclipsing is i'm they're kind of taking the shine away from uh 
Lomachenko and Crawford. And what I mean by that is, in my opinion, I seem dramatically more interested when Tyson Fury and Teofimo Lopez fight than when Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford fight. They're all four great fighters, but it just seems to me that uh, Fury and Lom- Teofimo, after this weekend, feel like more marquee fights, whereas Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford feel like fights I should watch because they're going to put on a great performance. Uh, I, I think it's honestly... Go ahead. The first. Go yeah. ahead. You go first. I got right. it. Um, honestly, I think it's they just make a lot more noise. I feel like they're they're more of a character versus, you know, Lomachenko especially is a lot more quiet, I think. You know, uh, Crawford, I don't think he, he's not really quiet, but I feel like uh, especially Tyson Fury, he, just, he loves to talk. He, he loves to talk just as much as he loves to fight. And and people love to watch people talk shit, you know, and, and all this and that. And that's what pretty much brings them a lot more attention. You know, they, they kind of they're bringing in a lot more attention, that which makes them more exciting. It's like, you know, before, I mean, like even in a street fight, you know, people start talking shit like, oh, you know, it makes it exciting. You know, it's like, oh, something's about to happen versus like, like a guy like Lomachenko. Like, you know, he's going to he's probably going to win the fight. But, you know, you don't. I, I mean, personally, I've never really seen him talk shit. You know, I never. I never seen him really talk. He, he's he's more quiet. Like you know, like for example, Manny Pacquiao and uh, and Floyd Mayweather. You know, Manny Pacquiao doesn't talk shit, but you know, so it's not as exciting as like you know watching like Mayweather fight when he's always that's all he does is talk shit. I think that's probably why. Um, what do you think, the, Mark? The main thing for me is um, uh, yes, it, it's because they're new to the the spotlight. Um, from Tyson Fury, from like kind of falling off and getting stripped for his titles. And the female was a young gun, 22 years old, then becoming world champion, spectacular, knocking out Richard Comey. Um, but honestly, like, it also, everything goes into effect because kind of like what Kevin said, like, we're so used to Lomachenko dominating and Terrence Crawford dominating that, that it's regular to us. And then we're just, all we, all we care about, oh, woof, who's going to fight next? Who's going to fight next? But Tofima brings something else new to the table, which is the celebrations and and then the swagger he brings. I'm not saying that Lomachenko and Terrence Crawford don't bring swagger. It's just that we're so used to Terrence Crawford dominating. <laughs> and um, another thing is Lomachenko, his English is not the best, so it's not usually viewer friendly in the United States. And Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford, once he gets that, once he gets that Errol Spence fight and all those fights. He could blow up to be a superstar because a lot of people want to see that fight. But uh, Terrence Tofimo and Tyson Fury, he just kind of took the persona of like doing this like a WWE superstar, like like just not caring, just trying to bring all audiences to the watch him fight. And uh, I think he's doing a great job, and I like how he's doing it. And it's just, it's just I'm interested because. Is boxing. They're bringing something new to the table, and at the end of the day, it's all about bringing more money to the sport. So I was going to bring up a controversial topic, but for the sake that you guys are potentially young professional boxers after this podcast, I don't want to talk about the split in networks because I don't want to endanger your guys' futures. But what do you guys think about this topic of the side of the street in boxing? We hear it a lot with Terrence Crawford and a couple other fighters, but there's a side of the street. What do you think of that? What do you mean, like, I, I answer it. Um, I, yes, like, there's no really um, center of power for boxing, and it's just, it kind of sucks for the fan, but um, at the end of the day, um, it just really, it's if they want to make a fight happen, they're going to make a fight happen, regardless of networking, like for Mayweather and Pacquiao. They had the networking on two different networks, I believe so. And it turned out great for everybody. And I believe they should just have it like that. Everybody sell their own network, whatever. Say it's, um, for example, The Zone and Showtime. Um, The Zone, their viewers get get it for that much. And they each have their own pricing for everything. And however they want to buy it, they'll buy it. And another thing I like how um, I think Bob Arum said it. Um, they had a 40-40 split. They wanted the 40-40, and then the winner takes 20, the 20 of the pot. 
um, for um, Terrence Crawford and Harold Smith because they're really debating about their resume. And I like that idea right there because it motivates the fighters even more because they they know they they can win more money if they win the fight. Hmm. Um, I think I'm gonna just let Mark answer that one. I feel like I'm not informed enough about you know what's been going on with the networks politically, but uh, I'll just agree with Mark. Okay, next question is, um, I guess. Uh, what do you guys think of Andy <coughs> Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua too? The just the fight, everything around it. What did you guys think of that as uh, pro, future pro boxers that want to entertain the crowd? Mm, I think I was kind of I was kind of uh, disappointed in the fight. I thought I expected more. I expected. Uh, I honestly thought. Joshua was gonna win the second one just because maybe he 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 realized that oh shit you know anyone can can hit me and I can be knocked down but I, I expected Andy Reese to put up more of a fight you know I expected it to be more competitive instead of you know because you know, Joshua just kind of picked him off with the jab and like in the first fight like where 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 Andy Reese was actually you know dogging on a uh, Anthony Joshua but. Reese couldn't even get in. I mean, he couldn't even get past that jab. So, um, I think, I think, it, I mean, like he said, he let the fame get to him. Like, I get it. I mean, I, I wouldn't know what to do in that situation. So, I can't even, I can't even talk on Andy Reese. But he's a, I give him props for for making it that far. You know, that's that that actually put hope in, in, in my eyes. You know, as you know, also a Mexican. You know, coming from nothing, he came from nothing and and caused like the hugest upset in boxing history. So. um but I mean, I I feel like there's gonna be a third fight, and I don't know. I really don't know who who won the third one. My maybe Joshua, to be honest. I just want to say one comment before Mark jumps in. Okay. Is it just me or did Anthony Joshua fight scary in that fight? He looked terrified. <laughs> like yeah, well, my main thing is um, I get what you can tell me. Um, every physical aspect, he's better than and Andy Reese from height, weight, yeah. um, muscle, um, reach, um, better. And um, he fought like he did, but he played it safe. It's a business. And at the end of the day, he protected his own business. And when they make the third fight, everybody will forget about the second fight. And honestly, I'm happy for Andy, uh, Andy Reese. He got what he deserved, as in for winning the first fight. He trained his butt off, and he came to shock the world. And um, it was just a part of Anthony Joshua's story in the end because Anthony Joshua came back. And once you get your – I'm not – I've never been in that position. But once you get your first loss, loss as probably a world champion and a gold medalist, it probably – a lot of doubt sneaks in your head. And, um, and then a lot of media starts bashing you. And um, a lot of people probably turn his back on him. And his main thing, he got back in the gym and he worked. He worked hard and he he got the he he dig deep and he got the, the the he got the he got it done and he got the decision. And um, it's not his fault. Um, Andy Andy Reese didn't show up on weight. He's been handling the fame like that his whole life, as in from coming home from London. While well, it was in London, that was home. Him winning the Olympic gold medal, so he was, so he had to deal with that, and there's he probably had to, had to deal with a lot of that in his lifetime, so it's it's just a, all a part of Anthony Joshua's story, and I'm happy for both of them, and uh, I'm just happy that none of them got really hurt, and uh, there's gonna be a, a third fight, and as a fan, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping that it's the farewell fight, like when they do it for Ruiz, like, that he doesn't go on, like, the tour of fighting Wilder, Fury, and then I hope that he does, like, maybe a Joshua and one more, and then it's maybe a call it a quits, like, I had a good career, let's maybe say off to the sunset. Um, Tony Harrison versus Jermel Charlo, do you guys have any thoughts? Mm -hmm. I think Charlo should win it. Um, even though Harrison's a great fighter, I think Charlo will get back into it. And um, I, I believe if it's, if it's a close decision, Charlo should get it. And from there, they'll, guys, make a, they'll make a, fight, a third fight. 
Have you guys seen any of these preview videos for this? Because they're they're pretty hilarious. No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like them talking trash on each other? Yeah, they're basically doing yo mama jokes for like 10 minutes. Are you sure. serious? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty funny. much like like they're, they're just like saying like, it's pretty funny. Like it's just like trash talk. Honestly, so. the one thing I, I, I'm kind of hating about boxing, it's becoming, the trash talk is becoming fake. It's becoming like, like some WWE shit. Like, it's not authentic anymore because, bo- like, boxing trash talk, it used to be real. Like, people actually wanted to kill each other, like, in the ring. Now I feel like it's more fake and more scripted. Do you feel like anybody's, like, a real boy like that anymore? Or do you think these people are saying it? But then, like, say someone fought you because I know who you are, Kevin, not to say that you're some wild dude, but, like, I feel like if someone talked all wild to you, the press conference is over, you might walk up and be like, what's up? Yeah. Uh, and the dude says, I'm just putting on a show for the fans. Yeah. How would you react to that? If they talked shit and I didn't know about it, and then they tried to be cool with me after? Yeah, exactly, because I think that's what you're basically saying happens now. Uh, well, I mean, if I, if I got to talk my shit back, and uh, you know, as long as I got as I as I got to sit, got, get my word out, and I and talk my shit, and then we both realize this, like, oh, it's just for the money. Then I really wouldn't care. I'm not a hothead like that. I don't really, I don't really hold grudges like that. So I, I probably would be cool about it. I mean, I feel like they know that it's all just for the money to begin with. So I feel like they coordinate the the shit talking. To be honest, um, yeah, honestly, yeah. for me, I don't, I wouldn't. Um, if, if it's like, honestly, um, wouldn't like it, like do it. Like I want it to be real. I want it to be for the fans and, uh, we're going to put on a show, but that they want to say they want to be entertainment and stuff like, no, like, like, I'm not going to be nice to you in the ring. Like, I'm going to like, if you say something bad, I'm not going to like get like how you said, like, you know how you said hothead? I'm not going to get hothead. Like, just remember what you said. Like, I'm going to just do my my trash talking with my fist and um and yeah like you fight your battles like you do like you can run your mouth and yeah you might say a couple of funny things about me and um uh, but like i'm a, like like it's i'm not here to be your friend this is a the, like the hurt business right, we're here right. to like beat each other up and the final thing before i let you guys go mm-hmm. name two people who win world titles next year uh like the first time or uh yeah or... like that would be better if you did a first timer i mean because it would ryan be garcia kind of like you okay we got ryan in there i think that's pretty uh, much like a slam dunk ryan garcia uh probably beats luke campbell for the world championship <laughs> campbell, mm, I, I would probably say ryan too just because that he yeah, has like yeah. the power to get into that position already of getting a title fight. Uh, um, and then Shakur already got a title, so that doesn't count, right? Yeah, yeah Shakur's count. already got that belt. Let me think real quick. Let me just scan the landscape. And I also um, want to say Ryan Garcia is way better than people give him credit for. Like that dude is pretty good, and a lot of people act like Ryan, it's just hype. Like not even trying to like praise him or any way you sort because I never like did. Ryan trains hard. Ryan is focused. Ryan goes through a lot of things that a lot of people don't see from being that famous. And he managed to stay focused and uh as like as his friend, like I I say like I'm proud of him, but then as a boxer, I respect him. I respect the grind and uh he's a great person. And he's um, a real star. And like he doesn't put on the person you see on camera and all that, that's the person, that's him. Like, he doesn't doesn't put on a fake persona. And that's the that's one of the best things that, like, that's one of the things that people don't realize. And um, the world champion, I say that it's going to ha- become a world champion, is, let me see. What we'll, we'll, we'll classes are open? Um... Uh, so I'm going to do the Uncle Lukey research right here. So I'm going to start giving you guys some, like, hints for the ones that – because I think 130 is about to be pretty darn open. Yeah. Because no, Shakur's one, going to 130. 126 but I mean, will be wide open. 
because like one thirty is about to. Well, I think jo, well JoJo is technically a world champion, but I think JoJo is going to beat Tevin. But let me give you guys some names because this is kind of like hitting and not very. Will Michael Conlon be a world champion in twenty twenty? Yes. It's, Oh yeah, I can't believe I missed this one. Virgil Ortiz. Uh Virgil Ortiz <laughs> or Boots. Jerron Ennis. I think <clears throat> definitely what happens. How crazy would that be if those two fought each other for a vacant belt? Uh I wouldn't like it at all, but <clears throat> um I think the fans would, would love crazy. it and you like anyone that knows the business of boxing would hate it and the fans would love it. Wait, who, yeah. Virgil Ortiz and uh, Ryan Garcia? No, Virgil Ortiz versus Boots. You know Boots? Uh, Boots? Yeah. He's from Philly. Him? Oh. Bro, he's really good. He's he's he basically like... Kid. Yeah, it's he lost to uh, Gary Russell's brother. Oh, okay. He lost him two days in a row, bro. Damn. And Gary Russell's brother that he lost to is really good, but he, like, just never fights, and people don't care because his name is the same as Gary Russell. So, like, they get him confused. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but, like, but those that, are probably the two guys, honestly. I'm, I feel like, and this is just an observer's perspective, the generation after Floyd, they kind of didn't really – want to get into the fights and they kind of drag things out and your generation like Shakur and them are just like let's get to these fights and they're just like knocking off these guys from the last generation yeah and um yeah that's true (laughs) um it just because um a lot of things go into effect because a lot of people seen that Canelo lose to lose to um Floyd Mayweather, and he learned a lot, and he just brought it and ran with it. And um, like for like for, I'm gonna just say this: like both uh, Tafima versus Lomachenko, the worst thing that could happen for for uh, Tafima was him lose, and that could, him that being the be- the worst thing that could happen. That could be the best thing, like a blessing in disguise. But I honestly, think that Tafima could pull off the victory and beat um, Lomachenko. And I know that's a bold statement, but um, I really like uh, I like his story. Um, I like his the, the bond his father and him share, and it's just um, it's great for boxing. Like his dad was screaming for the Lomachenko fight a year ago. Everybody thought he was crazy, but he doesn't look crazy. He doesn't look crazy anymore because his son's a world champion. Well, Junior was on my video camera saying Lomachenko's horrible. He's horrible. Yeah. He's an average fighter. Yeah. C level. Yeah. You, I, uh, I love to hear uh, to people's dad talk his trash and back his son up because you could tell he's so proud of his his son, as he should be. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. He's a character, man. Junior is a character. So uh, before we get out of here, you guys shout out your social medias, TikToks. Whatever it is <laughs> that you guys have. Said, take I'm going to make one soon. Yeah, uh, shout out. Shout. What, is, what is a TikTok? Um, <laughs> I, I just think it's like a video with any recording in the end. I mean, voiceover or something at the end. I just know I'm old because I have no desire to make one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm feeling right about now. Hey, man, social media gets you paid. Okay, so now, because social media does get you paid, why don't you guys shout out your uh, platforms and whatnot so if people enjoyed this, like, eight, ten people can follow you or something. <coughs> uh, follow me. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> follow me uh, at Mark the Boxer, M-A-R-C-T-H-E, Boxer. Mark with a C, Mark the Boxer on Instagram, Twitter. And, yeah, that's about it. Cool. Uh Follow me on Instagram at uh, Kevin Montano. That's a K E V one N M O N T A N O. 